morning, everybody. I am Jim Hoffman. I have the privilege of being pastor at St. John's United Methodist Church in Kansas City. It is time for our Tuesday daily devotion. I'll take a moment and wait for folks to be able to sign in. We usually take the first few minutes. Just make sure that people have an opportunity to join us for our Facebook Live event. So I'll take a moment to recognize folks as they join. And then here in a couple minutes, we will get started with our daily devotion. Looking forward to our time together today, as I do each day. So let's see who joins us this morning. Good morning, Linda. Looks like we've got a good number of folks who are on with us already on our live event. See who signs in this morning. Good morning, Garth and Cherry. Hello, Shirley. Good morning to you. Good morning, good morning to you, Barbara Paddock. Glad to see you this morning. Hi, Barbara and Chris Mueller. Glad you are here as well. Good morning, Stacy, and good morning, Diane. As I said, we'll take a couple minutes, just make sure everybody gets a chance to join us today. Hi, Ruth. Good morning to you. For those of you who have your Bibles handy and you want to find our scripture for today, we are going to be reading out of the Gospel of John, chapter 1. So if you want to look that up on your Bible app, or if you have your printed Bible, you can certainly look it up there as well. But John, chapter 1 is where we're going to be reading from. Hi, Jack and Pat. Glad that you have joined us this morning. We'll wait another minute or so. I want to make sure that we have ample time for everybody that wants to be a part of our daily devotion, that they can join us. I'm hoping you guys are all having a beautiful Tuesday morning. A little warm outside already, but... Um, Looks like it's going to be a wonderful day. We are <clears throat> we're waiting on a plumber to come to our house because we have a lovely backed up drain. And I have one of those little hand crank drain cleaners that you can send out about 25 feet. But evidently it must be in a different part because my efforts this morning at it were to no avail. So this afternoon we've got a plumber coming out. What a joy. Home ownership is such a wonderful thing. As I said, we're going to be reading from the Gospel of John, chapter 1, beginning in verse 35. So if you want to find that. We'll give it another 15 seconds or so, and then we'll get started with our devotion. All right. So John chapter one, verses 35 to the end of the chapter. And here is what it reads. It says the next day, John was standing again with two disciples, two of his disciples. When he saw Jesus walking along, he said, look, the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard what he said, and they followed Jesus. When Jesus turned and saw them following, he asked, what are you looking for? They said, Rabbi, which is translated teacher, where are you staying? He replied, come and see. So they went and saw where he was staying, and they remained with him that day. It was about four o'clock in the afternoon. One of the two disciples who heard what John said and followed Jesus was Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter. His, he, he first found his brother Simon, own brother Simon and said to him, we have found the Messiah, which is translated Christ. He led him to Jesus. Jesus looked at him and said, you are Simon, son of John. You will be called Cephas, which is translated Peter. The next day, Jesus wanted to go into Galilee and he found Philip. Jesus said to him, follow me. 
Philip was was from Bethsaida, the hometown of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found the one Moses wrote about in the law and the prophets, Jesus, Joseph's son from Nazareth. Nathanael responded, Can anything from Nazareth be good? Philip said, Come and see. Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him and said about him, Here is a genuine Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, How do you know me? Jesus answered, Before Philip called you, I saw you under the fig tree. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are God's son. You are the king of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. Our devotion is written this morning by Colin Harbach. He is from England, and his focus verse was, Day by day the Lord added to their numbers those who were being saved. Acts chapter 2, verse 47 from the NRSV. Here's his thought for today. He says, Since my early mathematics classes, I have been intrigued by the number one. By itself, it is weak and powerless. Even when it is multiplied by itself, it retains the same value. But in its relationship with other numbers, it becomes powerful. Even the greatest number increases when this small number is added to it. And when a critical decision has to be voted on, one vote can make all the difference. I find this to be an important comment on Christian life and the growth of the church. When I look at the first church, I notice that its growth is not spoken of as multiplication, but rather addition. The Gospels tell us how Jesus called his disciples personally, one by one, and their number grew as each responded to Jesus' invitation to follow him. When each of us follows Jesus, we are given the grace to contribute to the growth of God's kingdom. And his thought for the day is, in God's kingdom, I am never alone. And we um, think of this primarily in the aspect of what it means uh, for evangelism, uh, you know, the lovely little word in the uh, in the uh, English lexicon and in the church's lexicon that uh, some of us don't really want to hear about or, or have kind of a, a connotation or an idea about when it means to evangelize. Uh, what it means basically for us to evangelize is simply just to share the good news. Now, notice Jesus didn't say, come and listen to me. He said, come and see. And so in many ways, I think the proclamation of the gospel is in what people see, not what people hear. Right? Most of us think of the gospel as something that is shared orally in our, you know, questions. Do you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior? You know, those kinds of things. But what if the transmission of the gospel is more in activity than it is in oral proclamation or just word. The, the life and the giving of the gospel comes in what we see, right? What we do and what is seen by the world around us. And I would say that, that the growth of the community of faith happens when more and more people are invited to come and see and then invited to come and participate. They come and participate in the activities and the life of a community that is trying to figure out how to make a difference in the world in which it lives. How we live out through acts of kindness and acts of love, mercy and justice. How we proclaim a social holiness that is also a, a, a personal holiness and a personal holiness that is also a social holiness. We marry those two things together. So think about for yourself what you're planning on or what you're doing and what you're involved in that invites others to come and be witnesses, come and see, and then maybe come and participate. Um, I think of uh, folks like um, Linda, who um, invited some of her sorority sisters to come and see what happens at Baby Grace. And now some of them have become a uh, part of that and have served in it in various capacities, right? Others who have maybe extended family members that are a part of 
different activities that we, the church, are doing. You think about what's going on with our online services today. You know, I, I notice in in our time together here and in our time together on Sunday mornings, there are people who are new to this, new to St. John's. They're not part of our, our normal community of faith that we would have seen on a Sunday morning. They're new to us in this online venue and time, and they are coming to see what we are about and the invitation to also participate in the things that we do. Right? Think about the ways in which we can continue to share that with those that are in the world around us, how we can invite others to come and to see, to come and to participate. I'm going to share with you one particular thing that you might think about um, as a community and maybe think about getting involved in and maybe inviting some others to come and see as well. Uh, on Facebook earlier today, I posted something uh, on my news feed, <clears throat> excuse me, and it has to do with a, a, a community time of prayer. Faith communities have been trying to figure out how to respond to all that is going on, particularly when it comes to the issue of divide based upon race and economics and things like that. Uh, Adam Hamilton was talking about the fact that he was at one of the rallies last weekend down at the plaza area, he wore his name tag to let folks know that he was Adam Hamilton from Church of the Resurrection. And most people wouldn't know who he is that might have been down there. But, but one person said to him that it's interesting that the church has been absent from many of the protest rallies and things like that. And the, and the guy thought it was kind of curious. And Adam was just there, you know, proclaiming and, and listening to what was going on and listening to the grievances and things like that. That was his his whole goal and being there and then being supportive is what he told all of us in a, in a recent clergy group meeting. Um, one of the things that, that the church is trying to do is fi figure out as a community, and I'm talking about the church big in the Kansas City metropolitan area, not just St. John's. We're trying to figure out a powerful, meaningful way in which we can respond to what's been transpiring even here in our own community. Uh, for many years, decades, most of us know that Troost was the red line in our community. Anybody who lived west of Troost, you know, it was predominantly white and um, things like that. People who lived east of Troost were primarily people of color and you didn't cross those lines. You didn't try to move. Um, across those lines and different things like that. You didn't do business, all of that. It was the red line in, this, in the city. A group of clergy on um, Troost uh, that have, have uh, operated different houses of worship up and down the Troost area have formed a coalition and a group uh, that are going to get together on this Friday evening at 7 o'clock. And they're just going to invite people to stand along Troost with a sign, maybe a Bible verse, or even something that is like words out of our own book of discipline that says uh, all people are of sacred worth to God. And maybe you would, you would yeah, uh, ellipsis that with and to me, you know, or something like that. But to stand with the sign and to take an hour to pray over the division in our world and the division in our own community. They're going to do that from 7 o'clock to 8 o'clock all the way up and down the eight mile or so stretch that is truced, um, and they're inviting people of faith communities to come and be a part of that as well. I unfortunately have another commitment Friday night that I had already said yes to. This came uh, much later than, than um, this other commitment, and so I unfortunately will not be able to be there, but I want to encourage folks from St. John's to think about that as an opportunity to be a part of and maybe invite some of your friends that want to do something constructive to be a part of this conversation. Invite them maybe to go with you. And you don't have to stay for the whole, you know, the whole hour. Maybe you go for 15 minutes and you find a corner and you pause and you pray. Or maybe you go for 30 minutes or something like that. And maybe you organize as a group. 
um, you know, if you're interested in doing that and organizing as a community and St. John saying, we're going to go take this particular spot on, on truce that whatever kind of area you want to do, uh, maybe you do that. And you, you all as a community gather together, I, I, you know, whatever you want to do, I, I'll encourage you to do that. But to think about the power of us as a people who make sure that those in, our, in the world around us know that God's kingdom is for all people and that when we stand together, no one is alone and that we can welcome others into this fellowship, which is God's kingdom. I want to invite you to think about, you know, what powerful, meaningful way can you be a part of the addition to God's kingdom and how you are sharing the message of God's love with others, maybe as an activity, not just as an oral proclamation. Let's pause and think about this for a moment as we think and pray today. Dear God, thank you for adding each of us to your kingdom so that we might live in fellowship with you and with all your people. We pray, O oh God, that your will would be done on this earth and that your kingdom would come. We thank you that you give us today all that we need, that you are forgiving and have forgiven us of our sins and our trespasses. We pray that you continue to lead us out of temptation and that you deliver us from the one who would distract us into evil. We know that your kingdom is a power and glory, and we pray that it comes soon. Amen. Thank you, everybody, for joining me today. I will look forward to visiting with you tomorrow. Um, if you're curious about my Facebook post, you can find it. Uh, it's just on my news feed, or you can look look for it. But I would encourage you to take a moment maybe to, to look at it, um, listen to it. It is a video of three pastors that are sharing an invitation. So take a moment maybe to uh, review it and read it. And if you're interested, you can certainly send me a private message through, um, excuse me, <clears throat> through Facebook Messenger. And we could have some conversation about Friday evening if you're interested in that. Uh, or anything else, feel free to reach out. Take a moment maybe to share this video so that others might have a chance to review it and, and share in our devotion time today. Otherwise, I will look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Have a blessed afternoon.